Good day. I'm going to uh, discuss uh, utilities. So our topic is acoustics, sound absorption. So what is the definition for acoustics? Technology of uh, designing spaces or structures and uh, mechanical systems to meet uh, hearing needs with proper design. Wanted sound can be heard properly and unwanted sound or noise can be attenuated to the point where it does not cause annoyance. Terminologies, absorption coefficient is the integer number between 0, 0.00 and 1. So meaning this is the digit representing the total sound energy absorbed by a material at a specific frequency. The sound absorption coefficient of 0, 0.00 indicates complete reflection of sound. The sound absorption coefficient of uh, 1 indicates complete absorption, meaning it is 100% of uh, sound. So the concrete and painted masonry having absorption coefficient between 0 0.01 and 0 0.02 at most frequencies are considered to be very sound reflective material. So it means that it reflects the, uh, the source or the sound projected through the floor. Materials exhibiting a high degree of sound absorption with coefficient above 0.90 include thick uh, 4 inches or it is equivalent to uh, 10 centimeter or greater fiberglass insulation panels and certain uh, suspended acoustical ceiling tiles data published for some uh, fiberglass insulation panel and certain suspended acoustical ceiling tiles Data published for some acoustical materials shows absorption greater than 1 or is equivalent to 100% at one or more frequency, meaning it totally absorbs sound. This is because the effective absorption surface area in a thick or shaped material is greater than material space area used to determine the absorption coefficient. So acoustics is the technology of designing spaces, structures, and mechanical system to meet hearing needs with proper design. Wanted sound can be heard properly and unwanted sound or noise can be attenuated to the point where it does not cause annoyance. Acoustics is the branch of physics that deals with the control of sound. Architectural acoustics may be uh, defined as the uh, technology of designing spaces, structures, and mechanical system to meet hearing needs with proper design. Wanted sound can be heard properly, and unwanted sound or noise can be attenuated to the point where it does not cause annoyance. Acoustical treatment is the application of absorbent or reflecting materials to the walls, ceiling, and floor of an enclosed space to alter or to improve its acoustic property. Coefficient of absorption is the measure of the efficiency of a material in absorbing sound at a specified and or is also equal to a fraction part of incident sound of energy. At the frequency of absorbed by the material, the percentage of sound energy absorbed by a material is the coefficient absorption, which is actually represented by X, which ranges from uh, 0 to 0.99. The coefficient varies with frequency. So decibels, it is named after Ernst Weber and Gustav Fincher. 
the 19th century German scientists discovered that nearly all human sensations are proportional to the logarithm of the intensity of the stimulus. In acoustics, the Bell unit, named in honor of Alexander Graham Bell, was first used to relate the intensity of sound to an intensity level corresponding to the human hearing sensation, the human hearing range from the threshold of audibility at 0 decibel to the threshold of pain at 130 decibel represents a tremendous intensity ratio. So logarithms allow huge range of human hearing sensitivity to be conveniently represented by smaller numbers. So what is a decibel scale? The decibel scale, which is actually abbreviated in terms of uh, dB, is a logarithmic scale based on 10 times the uh, logarithm of a ratio of sound pressure. The decibel levels of two noise sources cannot be added directly. Instead, use this uh, simplified method. So I would like you to see the table below. So when you say the decibel scale is from 0 to 1, it means that you're going to add 3. So it, in case that the sound produced by two sound sources ranges from 2 to 3, just add 2. Or if the sound produced by two noise sources, it ranges from 2, I mean from 4 to 9, add 1. If the two uh, noise uh, sources produces greater than 10, so meaning it is equivalent to 0. So let us give here an example. So the rule in solving decibel scale, the difference between two sound levels in decibel dB add to the higher level. For example, we have 90 decibel and another sound source is 20 decibel. So meaning because the rule here is 90 minus uh, 20 decibel, it is 70. So meaning it is greater than 10. So 90 plus 0 is 90 decibel. As compared to uh, this value, we have two sound sources. Both is the equivalent is 60 decibel. So take note, if you're going to subtract 60 from 60 decibel once again, it is zero. So meaning it the range falls from zero to one. Therefore, you're going to add it to 60 plus three equals to 63 decibel. So here are the solution using the table above. For 90 decibel, retain the highest value which is 90, and subtract the lesser value, which is 20. 90 minus 20 is equivalent to 70. Now, 70 falls on the range greater than 10. It is greater, so the equivalent is 0. Therefore, add 90 and 0, it is equivalent to 90 decibel. This is how we were able to solve the problem. So the second problem here is, for the 60 decibel because two values the same so 60 plus 60 is equivalent to 0 so 0 falls under this range just add 3 that is why 60 plus 3 equals to 63 echo is the repetition of sound produced by the sound wave from uh, an obstructed surface and received late. 
So echo is the reflection of unwanted sound. Frequency refers to the loudness and softness of sound or vibrating source. It is expressed in hertz. The inverse square law. So sound wave from a point source outdoors with no obstruction called free field condition are virtually spherical and expanded outward from the source. Point source has physical uh, dimensions of size that are far less than the distance an observer is away from the source. Power is a basic quantity of energy flow, although both acoustical and electrical Energies are measured in watts. There are different forms of energy and cause different responses. For instance, 10 watts is abbreviated by W of uh, electric energy at an incandescent lamp produces a very light dim, whereas 10 watts of acoustical energy at a loudspeaker can produce extremely loud sound. Uh, power for musical instrument can range from 0 0.05 watts for a clarinet to 25 watts for a clarinet to 25 watts for bass drum. Noise. Any sound that is unwanted. Annoying. Discordant. Interrupts. Uh, infringes interferes with one's hearing of something. So the octave band covers a range from one frequency which is actually expressed in hertz to twice that frequency. So meaning if f to 2f, it means that it is actually multiplied twice. That is why we were able to increase the octave band based on its frequency. So just multiply it times 2. This is what the representation of 2F stands for. So a reflecting surface, a non-absorptive surface from which incident sound is uh, reflected, used especially to redirect sound in a space to be effective. A uh, reflecting surface has uh, at least dimension equal to or greater than the uh, wavelength of the lowest frequency of the sound being reflected. Reverberation is the persistence of sound within an enclosed space caused by multiple source of reflection. Sound after the source has stopped Reverberation is the persistence of sound after the source of sound has stopped, a result of repeated reflections. Reverberation time. Amount of time at a specific frequency that a sound in an enclosed space takes to uh, decrease 60 uh, decibel in level after the source sound has stopped. The uh, reverberation time gives a uh, listener the sense of the size, aliveness, and warmth of a room. Reverberation time increases proportionally with the uh, cubic volume of the room and decreases proportionally with the quantity of sound absorbing surface in the room. The time in seconds required for a sound to make an enclosed space to diminish in 60 decibel. So reverberation time describes as the period required for sound level to decrease 60 decibel after the sound source has stopped producing sound. The reverberation time is uh, directly proportional to the volume of a space 
inversely proportional to the uh, units of absorption. Reverberation time equals to 0 0.049. You're going to multiply the volume. And A is actually the representation of total subines. So this is actually the formula for reverberation time, which is in English system. Subines, a unit of sound absorption equal to one square feet of a perfectly absorptive surface, equivalent also to 0 0.049 volume of cubic feet in English system. Sound is the uh, audible signal. For architects, we simply define sound as an audible signal. It simply means that the science of acoustical uh, property is concerned with the building occupants. It is always assumed that the greater the uh, hearer has a pair of a healthy young ears. With a uh, detection uh, range of uh, 20 to uh, 20,000 hertz. It is probably best to view sound as a series of pressure variation in air. This uh, pressure variation take the form of periodic compression and rare fractions. Sound is produced by a vibrating object or surface in order to sound to be transmitted or propagated it requires an elastic medium the most common medium for transmission is the air such sound is called airborne sound however sound it can be easily transmitted through common building materials and component such as steel concrete wood and metal framing piping and gypsum wallboard. This type of sound is called structure borne sound. A weighted decibel is a standard single number rating representing the overall sound energy of a given source. A weighted network in the sound level meter filters sound in a manner similar to the human ear by downgrading low frequencies. Sound uh, variation. Sound is a very vibration in an elastic medium such as air, water, most building materials and earth. Noise can be defined as unwanted sound that is annoying sound made by others or very loud sound which may cause hearing loss. An elastic uh, medium returns to its uh, normal state after a force is removed. Pressure is a force per unit area. Sound energy progress rapidly, producing extremely small changes in atmospheric pressure and can travel great distance. However, each vibrating particle moves only an infinitesimal amount to either side of its normal position. It bumps adjacent particle and imparts most of its uh, normal motion and energy to them. A full circuit by a displaced uh, particle is called a cycle. The time required for one complete cycle is called the period and the number of complete cycles per second is the frequency of vibration. Consequently, the reciprocal of frequency is the period. Frequency is measured in cycles per second. The unit for which it is called the Hertz is abbreviated HZ. Wavelength, a sound passes through air and to and uh, from uh, motion of the uh, particle alternately pushes together and draws apart adjacent air particles 
forming region of rare fraction and compression. Wavelength is the uh, distance of sound wave travels uh, during one cycle of vibration. It also is the distance between adjacent region where identical condition of uh, particle displacement occur. Sound wave is air, also uh, analogous to the ripple or waves caused by a stone drop into the still water. The concentric ripples vividly show pattern of molecules transferring energy to adjacent molecules along the surface of the water. In air, however, sound spreads to all directions. Wavelength is the uh, distance of sound traveled by the uh, vibrating sound or sound wave. Three basic properties of any pure sound are its pitch, the rate at which uh, vibration are produced is uh, usually expressed as the number of cycles per second. Cycle is the complete uh, vibration back and forth. Frequency of the tone, the number of cycles per second. The higher the frequency of a tone, the higher the pitch. Intensity. The intensity depends upon the strength or amplitude of vibrations producing the uh, sound. Quality or timbre, pleasant and unpleasant sound. So how do sound levels add? This one has something to do with the decibel scale. So sound pressure levels in decibel or weighted decibels are based on a logarithm scale. They cannot be added or subtracted in the usual arithmetic way. If one machine emits a sound level of 90 decibel and a second identical machine is placed beside the first, the combined level is 93 decibel, not 180 decibel. So using same principle as the decibel scale, but for the first part, we only have utilized here the rough method. But for the second part, in which we would like to utilize another way to solve the decibel scale, this is far more accurate. So, meaning, if you're going to add 90 plus 90, it is not 180. Because the ruling here is if you're going to subtract 90 minus 90, it is equivalent to 0. So take note because 0, the equivalent is 3. 90 plus 3 equals to 93. This is how we were able to arrive at 93 decibel. So take note that. 90 if there are two sources two sound sources that has 90 decibel it is not equivalent to 180 but 93 because the rule is if you're going to subtract 90 minus 90 it is zero so zero the amount added to the higher of the two noise level is three so 90 plus three is equivalent to 93 decibel. So this is far more accurate than the rough method. So take note, if the range is zero, add three. From 0.1 to 0.9, 2 0.5. If the range is from one to 2.4, add two. If the range is from 2.5 till four, add 1.5. If the range is from 4.1 to 6, add 1. If the range is from 6.1 till 10, 0.5. But if it is greater than 10, 
the value is 0. So another way of uh, solving the uh, logarithmic decibel scale is using this formula. Okay. So uh, combined sound level, 10 times the logarithm. So we have here 10 to the exponent of x divided by 10 plus 10 to the exponent of y divided by 10. So the sample problem is if there are two sound sources in a room, for example, a radio producing an average sound level of 62 decibel and television producing a sound level of 73 decibel, then the total sound level is a uh, logarithm sum. So the solution here combined sound level 10 times logarithm 10 raised to the exponent of 62 decibel then it is divided by 10 then add the other value 10 to the exponential to the exponent of 73 divided by 10 is equivalent to 73.33 decibel if you're going to round it off the combined sound level is 73 decibel. How sound is absorbed? Sound is absorbed by a mechanism which converts sound into the other forms of energy and ultimately into heat. So frequency of sound is the rate of repetition of a periodic event. Sound in air consists of a series of compression and rare function due to air particles set into motion by a vibrating source. The uh, frequency of sound wave is determined by the number of times per second of a given molecule of air vibrates uh, about its uh, neutral position. So the greater the number of uh, complete vibration called cycles, the higher the frequency, the unit of frequency is the hertz. Pitch is the subjective response of uh, human hearing to frequency. Low frequencies generally are considered uh, boomy and high frequencies, screechy or hissy. Most uh, sound sources, except uh, for pure tone, contain energy over a wide range of uh, frequencies for measurement, analysis, and specification of sound. The frequency range is divided into sections called bands. One common standard division is into the 10 octave band, identified by their center frequencies. So take note, as mentioned a while ago, F times 2F. So this one has something to do with our discussion. The octave band. An octave band covers the range from one frequency Hc to twice that of frequency f to 2f. So this is what it uh, means for. So let us go back to uh, to frequency of sound. Frequency is the rate of uh, repetition of a periodic event. So one common standard division is into the 10 octave band identified by their center of frequencies. So if you're going to multiply 31.5, it becomes 63. 125 times 2 is equivalent to 250. 250 times 2 
is 500. 500 times 2 is 1,000. 1,000 times 2 is 2,000. 2,000 times 2 is 4,000. 4,000 times 2 is 8,000. 8,000 times 2 becomes 16,000 hertz. So this is just to refresh you up how the values of the octave band was divisible from F to 2F. So meaning all you need to do is just multiply it two times. These are the recommendations for the design of uh, room shape. Good acoustical planning is based upon many significant factors that affect the insulation, transmission, absorption, reflection, diffusion, and hearing of sound. For floor plan in a small room, the sound level is sufficiently high for good hearing for a wide range of the ratio of the length to the width. The optimum uh, ratio of length to width for a room is not a fixed number but varies with the size and shape of the uh, seating area. For most uh, room, the ratios of uh, length to width of between 2 is to 1. And meaning, if you have a uh, rectangle, uh, a square plan, just add 2 square, it becomes 2. So meaning, if you have uh, a width, which is equivalent to 1, so just multiply it times 2, so it becomes a rectangle. So 1 is the ratio for the height of the room. So meaning this is already equivalent to the volume and this is already equivalent to the floor area of the room. Have uh, been found satisfactory. So for rectangle for square that becomes rectangular type of structures. Circular and elliptical shaped floor plans gives uh, rise to focusing effect and non-uniform distribution of sound. So meaning, if your plan is circular and elliptical, it produces a lot of echoes. So you need to focus the defects is more pronounced. Ceiling. Ceiling and wall should provide favorable reflection of sound. Highly reflective ceiling may be used for good advantage in general. Ceiling height of a room to be, to be used for speech and music should be about one third to two third of the width of the room. As lower ratio for large rooms and higher ratio for small rooms. Example, find the ceiling height, a large room, 33 meters wide by 50 meters long, use the lower ratio. So it is equivalent to one third. So one third, then take note that the width of the room is 33 meters. So you have 11 meters high from floor to ceiling. So this is true if it is a large room. While for a small room that has 6 meters wide and 8 meters long, use the higher ratio, 2 thirds. So take note that the width is 6 meters. So if you're going to divide it by 3, the output is 4 meters high. While for the wall, cavity wall, the dual wall, 
construction to inhibit the transmission of sound by convection. So sound lock is a space architecturally uh, located to trap the sound transfer. For, while for the floor, you need to provide here a uh, vibration isolator, a resilient base for mechanical equipment installed to reduce the transmission of vibration and noise to the supporting structure and prevents damage or crack to walls, glass, and the structure. Sound uh, impact. Structure borne sound generated by uh, physical impact as footsteps or by moving of uh, furniture. So, Sabines is the total sound absorbing units expressed in Sabines provided by a given material is a function of its absorptive properties and the surface area as defined by this formula. So A is expressed as the Sabines units of sound absorption, while S is the surface area in square feet. And X is the coefficient of absorption. So the uh, total sound absorption for a space is the sum of subbinds for all surfaces in the room. Reverberation time is uh, described as the period required for the sound level to decrease 60 decibel after the sound source has stopped reducing sound. So meaning reverberation time as the summation of which is actually uh, the sum of all the uh, sound absorbed property so you need to get the volume of the room divided by the uh, surface area and also multiplied by the sound absorption unit so meaning K represents the constant if it is actually equal to 0.49 when volume is in cubic feet, while K or constant is 0.16 when volume is in cubic meters or in metric scale. So take note that we need to use to compute for the room, we are actually solving for the volume of the room in cubic meters or in cubic feet. While the summation S, which is actually the surface absorption absorbed by the floor, by the ceiling, and by the walls, are the total absorptive, which is expressed in subines at the frequency. So this is actually the formula already presented for the reverberation time, both in English system and in metric system. So audibility is affected by shape of the room, size of room, room furnishings, position of source of sound, and reverberation period. Shape of room in plane, preferably rectangular or trapezoidal in direction of sound is... Uh, suggested. So square is also preferred. Circular or oval shape is actually not advisable, but we can still make the necessary correction if we still opt to use this shape. Or acoustically unfavorable. So large curve areas produce focal points and large overhangs. So we need to screen path the sound. Both are detrimental to good hearing conditions. Provisions of uh, step seating are advantageous. Breaking walls and ceiling surfaces produce even sound distribution. So for room size, normal speech is audible for a distance of about 20 to 30 meters, or it is equivalent to 65 to 100 feet. 
in direction of the speech. So 13 meters is equivalent to 34 feet to side of speaker, 10 meters is equivalent to uh, 33 feet behind the speaker. Maximum cubic space content without uh, use of aids or loudspeaker and reflection etc. should not exceed 18,000 cubic meters. So it is also equivalent to 1 million cubic feet for music. Height should not exceed 8 meters or it is equivalent to 28, 26 feet, where possible uh, height with length ratio should be 2 is to 3 is to 5. Or it is also expressed in 1 is to 3, the uh, square root of 2. Or it is also so divisible to 3 cos to square root of 4. So this is actually the method used in the golden section. So therefore, to make the ratio more simplified, we just use 3 is to 4 is to 8. So room furnishing and finishing in general, solid roofs and walls are less satisfactory than suspended ceiling and claddings. With the intervening uh, void which uh, will uh, resonate with the sound wool silotex etc in the design of heating and ventilation system avoid rising warm air current between sound of uh, source and listener absorbent should be provided on rear walls near box seats on domes surfaces and on solid balcony railings so seating should be staggered and rising according to french standard stepping of seating by 80 millimeter or 3 till 1.4 inch ensures direct sound in all seats and in uk the um, suggested uh, dimension is 100 millimeter or 5 inch in normal is allowed so position of sound should be in front of a hard reflecting surface and where room height is excessive reflective uh, sound boards above sound source are recommended meaning it is above the speaker or in short it is actually the ceiling where there is more than one source of sound, each must be uh, sufficiently close to the other. Loudspeaker on same room as uh, source source of uh, sound should be uh, greater or less than 34 meters, or it is equivalent to 112 feet and 24 meters to Actually, this one is also equivalent to 80 feet away from the sound. For theoretical and musical performances, respectively, the reverberation time is caused by the reflection of uh, direct sound from wall and ceiling sur surfaces. So, meaning, number one, this should be registered by listener as gradual dying down of sound so let us uh, illustrate a problem so this situation here is a classroom design a classroom that is moderately quiet of sound from its enclosing surfaces the built-up is affected by the size of the room and the amount of absorption within the room. You are required to present complete solution accompanied by drawing to support your plan. So you need to draw the plan for sectional elevations and the interior space of the classroom. So the larger the scale, the more accurate your drawing is. So sound coefficient 
are already provided in the original classroom setup and the renovated classroom as well. So this will assure that you have a uniform answer. So the problem is you have a 50 feet by 50 feet uh, floor area for a classroom. Then the uh, height. is uh, 15 feet so take note that in a classroom there are actually 50 chairs available so these chairs are upholstered only 25 seats were occupied so i would like you to visualize the room that has two sides are made of wood and one side is made of concrete the classroom is still using a blackboard and the one side of the room is made of a glass wall. So, meaning this is how the original setup of the glass room is actually designed. So, the formula for the reverberation time, we are using the English system. So, take note, this is the coefficient of absorption tables that can be found in any acoustical books so we will use 1000 hertz so for concrete wall so it falls under 0 0.07 for the floor it falls under 0 0.07 which is actually made of wood parquet while for the glass wall under 1000 hertz it is 0 0.03 so this is the coefficient of absorption or we can also call coefficient of absorption as the coefficient of utilization for the ceiling it is actually plastered and smooth finish it the um, equivalent of its uh, coefficient of utilization is 0 0.03 while for the wood wooden wall the um, coefficient of utilization is 0 0.09 So take note that the upholstered seat has actually a very high value of uh, coefficient of utilization. That is why for the seats which are upholstered and occupied or with seated students the sound absorption coefficient is 0 0.96 and for the seats that are just merely upholstered and unoccupied or there's no student seated on it it is 0 0.88 so all the coefficient utilizations were actually encoded here so you could easily see the value that we have used to solve the original material for the classroom setup so take note you need to renovate the classroom to improve its audibility of the classroom setup using these materials to improve the audibility of the classroom so take note i have personally indicated here the coefficient of utilization in that way we could correct the classroom's audibility so what are the requirements? So the reverberation time of the uh, renovated classroom and also the original classroom should be solved. Then we need to draw conclusion on both the original classroom and the renovated classroom. So how much is the room noise reduction of the room from the original setup till the newly renovated classroom? So this one, you can actually perform this in a A3 white on size paper. So meaning this is highly uh, recommended in that way you could easily foresee how the solution was actually solved. So take note that the volume of the classroom because the floor area is 50 feet by 50 feet and the ceiling height from floor to ceiling is just 15 feet. If you multiply the value 
the volume of the classroom is 37,500 cubic feet. So we have chose the center of frequencies of the octave band for moderately quiet. It is under 60 decibel. And the octave band falls under 1000 hertz. So I would like you to refer to the absorption coefficient tables as presented a while ago for the various building materials, normal, normal interior finishes of the room. So take note that the original material used in the classroom for the floor, because we have a floor area of 50 feet by 50 feet, the coefficient of utilization is 0.6. The value is 150 sabines. As for the ceiling, we have a floor area of 50 feet by 50 feet, same floor area as the floor, but the coefficient of utilization is 0 0.03. The value is 75 sabines. While the other uh, or just one side of the wall is just made of glass wall, which is actually a heavy plate glass. So take note. The length of the wall is 50 feet and the height of the room is 15 feet. Just multiply the coefficient of utilization, which is up to the 0 0.03. The value is 22.5 sabines. While the other wall is just uh, made of concrete wall, the length is 50 feet. And the height of the wall is 15 feet and the coefficient of utilization of the concrete wall is 0 0.07 the value is 52.5 sabines while take note for this room setup there are there, there are actually two parts or of the wall that is made of a wooden wall so that is why we have a multiplication Factor here, which is actually two, because it represents the two wall. So, because the length of the wall is 50 feet and it has a height of 15 feet, the coefficient of utilization of the wooden wall is 0 0.09. If you multiply it times two, because there are two walls that have the same size and finish the value is 135 sabines while for the seats that are upholstered and with audience or students seated on it so take note there are actually 50 upholstered seats only half of the class attended so we have a value of 25 students so meaning 25 students are just present. So 25 present student and the coefficient of utilization for this 25 students, including the upper third seat, it has a coefficient of utilization, which is 0.96, as 24 sabines. While for the seat that is upholstered and without a seated audience or student, so only the upholstered seat is there. So take note, only half of the class. So meaning the 50 seats supposedly is just divided into two. So we have 25 seats times the coefficient of utilization of the empty chair is 0.88. The value is 22 sabines. If you're going to add the entirety of this, we have 481 sabines. We just substitute it to this formula, 0 0.049 for the reverberation time in English system. Then we just multiply it with the volume of the room, which is actually equivalent to 37,500 cubic feet. And take note, the, the sound absorption coefficient of the different building materials is 481 sabines, it falls under 3.82 seconds. So the recommendation here is to renovate the classroom. So take note in this chart, this will actually serve as our guide 
for the reverberation room for the classroom. So here in this table for a classroom and lecture and conference room, the required reverberation time must fall in between 0.90 seconds up to 1.10 seconds. So this is the prescribed So that is why, take note, the re recommended reverberation time for lecture and conference room or elementary classroom is from 0.90 until 1.10 seconds. So I would like you to see the table for the reverberation ta time above. Therefore, you need to redesign the finishes or materials of the classroom using the prescribed materials indicated in the table for the renovation of the classroom okay so meaning this will actually serve as our guide in determining the proper reverberation time of whatever room setup we are actually designing so here just follow the steps solved used a while ago in the uh, in solving the coefficient absorption or coefficient of utilization so take note as uh, we have what we have indicated a while ago on this table for the renovated classroom to improve its audibility what only changes here is the coefficient of utilization while the room uh, the class, the size of the classroom is still retained or nothing was changed. So we will still adopt the 50 feet by 50 feet uh, square area or the floor area and 15 feet high from floor to ceiling. So therefore, we need to renovate the classroom. So still, the volume of the classroom is 37,500 cubic uh, feet. So we will still adopt the uh, octave band, which is actually 1,000 hertz using 60 decibel. So the sound absorption floor area for the floor take note the coefficient of utilization is 0 0.01 because we are actually using a uh, tile already that is why it has a very uh, minimal ratio that why that is why the floor will actually reflect the sound wave coming from the sound source or the speaker which is actually the instructor so take note that the floor area of the classroom is 50 feet by 50 feet and the coefficient of utilization is 0 0.01 you're able to attain 25 subbines while for the sound absorption coefficient for the ceiling because we are actually using an acoustical board it has a ratio of 0.68 now because the floor area and the ceiling has the same floor area that is why we adopted 50 feet by 50 feet and multiply it to the coefficient of utilization for the ceiling using a corkboard that has 0.68 ratio the output is 1700 sabines so still one wall of the classroom which is made of glass wall and it is using a heavy plate glass so this one is still retained from the original uh, setup of the classroom having a length of 50 feet the height of the classroom from floor to ceiling is uh, 15 feet as a side 
it has a coefficient of sound absorption of 0 0.03 is equivalent to 22.5 sabines. While for the other side of the room, so meaning one wall, it is made of concrete wall. Smooth plastered finish, having a length of 50 feet and height of the room is 15 feet. So the coefficient of utilization for the smooth plastered finish is 0 0.03 produces 22.5 sabines. So take note that we are using wooden wall. So still, it is 50 feet long and the height of the ceiling is 15 feet times 0 0.07 because there are actually two walls made of wood. That's why we have two. Produces 105 sabines. While for the upholstered seat with seated students, we have 0.96. The output is 24 sabines. So meaning we still retained the seats that are actually upholstered. While for the upholstered seat without uh, seated students, 25 times 0.88 is 22 sabines. So if you're going to add all of these uh, materials, the equivalent is 1,921 sabines. So solve the problem using the formula, using the English system. So therefore, 0 0.049, the volume of the classroom is 37,500 cubic feet. We divide it by 1,000. 921 sabines. The reverberation time is 0.96 seconds. So uh, the conclusion is the uh, renovated classroom is already improved. So conclusion, because the, the original classroom produces 3.82 seconds less the renovated classroom produces 0.96 seconds divided by the original uh, sound of the uh, classroom which is 3.82 I am referring to the uh, reverberation time times 100% so the equivalent is 74.87% so the reverberation time was reduced to 74.87% which is clearly noticeable change. The absorption provided by the teacher and students will further reduce reverberation depending on the number of occupants that are present during the classroom discussion. Therefore, the distribution throughout the room and the clothing worn is also very important because it has high sound absorption capacity, meaning the 0.96 second will still be reduced if the students who actually attended the classroom are complete. So let us solve for the noise reduction of the classroom for the original setup till the newly renovated classroom. So take note that the formula is already here. So all we need to do is just incorporate here the subbines of the renovated classroom divided by the sabines of the original classroom setup. So we have a value of 6.0 decibel. So this ends my presentation.